Hello, everyone. So yes, as I just described, my name is Corey White. Um, I'm a, a PhD candidate at the Center for Geospatial Analytics at NC State. Um, and oh, too far away. Can you hear me better now? OK, so yes, I'm Corey White uh, from the uh, Center for Geospatial Analytics at North Carolina State University. Um, I am starting a new open source uh, a new open source platform called Open Planes, which is, as the title says, is it the new web grass? Um, is it just the click on the mouse? Yes. OK. So I guess mo my motivation. So web grass and why is this happening now and why did uh, we decide to do this? Um, so. Uh, how many in this room are familiar with grass? Because I'm going to skip kind of that introduction if, uh, if everybody's familiar. Okay, so the majority of the room. So grass is a, a GIS platform that has been around for a very long time and has a very, very robust feature set um, and is very heavily used in academia, especially in the uh, uh, participatory modeling area where I particularly work. So building um, building open planes and having this sort of a uh, web version of grass is allowing us to is allowing us to uh, bring models that are made in grass to a wider audience. All right. So what is open planes? So like I was just saying here, it's a web-based geospatial modeling platform designed to enable diverse user engagement with advanced geospatial models and simulations. Uh, so grass is, of course, the core geospatial engine here, with uh, Octania working as the, uh, the API layer on top. And then Open Planes is the, uh, the web client that is utilizing all of this to provide the user interactivity to these existing and uh, new geospatial models that are found in GRASS. So just a brief. Uh, show of the system architecture. It's Octinia and Grass are very much being used as, as kind of the standalone geospatial compute layer, but not the actual uh, API interacting with the uh, with the client. The reason for this is that there's a lot of other logic that um, is going on that I didn't want to um, embed with the Octinia data and all the geospatial stuff. So like managing user accounts, and uh, one of the initial pieces also of this was that we were trying to build it to be very engaging across uh, as like a game. So being able to have a lot of other business logic that's not necessarily spatial related, but related to the application is spread out into uh, GeoDjango API that's then kind of working as a proxy for Octinia, so making those calls on behalf and at that point also, it can, has the benefit of using whichever route is faster for analysis. If there's something that can be done faster using PostGIS, JO Django stack versus going through Octinia, it'll choose the optimal option for that processing there. Um, and then, yes, with, with this, we're using GeoServer, and it's reading directly out of the GRASS uh, database uh, to, uh, to send a the cloud optimized geotiffs. So Open Planes is a series of open source libraries uh, that can be used independently or together to make the bigger application. So there's this uh, the Django Octania plugin, which basically will give you all the Octania routes into your Django app. And then there's this GrassJS uh, plugin, which is just a JavaScript, JavaScript client for accessing those routes. Uh, React Grass and React Open Layers are just what I'm using to build the client, but those are uh, also segmented out. So if you wanted to just use the GrassJS for direct communication with, say, Octinia, you can do that and skip the Django part. But you can also use it for um, the fuller stack application. So I'm trying to keep it very modular. And depending on your use case and you want to build something custom of your own, you can use the pieces you'd like, and if you want to use the completed uh, uh, open planes application, 
then that's all there for you too. Um, so WebGRASS, uh, what you're seeing here is a, uh, the very standard grass sample data set, um, just kind of showing the, how it would look in the browser right now. So you have your locations, your map sets, and your data types, and as you can see here, just the brief PNGs of all the different data that you have in your grass database. Um, from here, you have your, uh, you can go into the map to explore just that layer or look at the metadata. Um, also in like this sort of layer, you can create new grass locations and new map sets on the fly. Um, and the data types you can look at right now are raster, um, vector, and uh, stack data sets. You can pull in the stack data. Um, so another very common view for people who are familiar with grass would be this is kind of like an aggregated version of the r.info. So getting all the info about your data here um, is just another way of looking at it. And yeah, so in this sense, where Open Plains is very much just trying to uh, replicate what the desktop client of Grass is doing and giving you that same feature set um, at that base level. All right, so if we go in and want to view data, all the data being returned from Octinia and the processing is coming in as uh, the COGS, the Cloud Optimized GeoTIFFs. And so because of that, you're able to use all the fun WebGL feature sets around that with your data on the browser. So these are just some examples of doing, um, changing the color scheme on the fly, uh, exposure opacity, kind of all things you've seen before if you've played with web optimized geotiffs, but this is new for uh, grass data and especially on the web. So having this sort of functionality in here, I'm hoping that in future iterations, similar to the last talk, uh, which was looking at WebAssembly, um, WebAssembly could be an option for in the future with this, but right now I'm currently looking at uh, for longer running processes, if you're running like an analysis, that we'd be able to do on the client, um, at least for use cases where it's appropriate, on the client uh, analysis through WebGL, and th show that very quickly while still sending the process out to Actinia to be uh, to be rendered and then brought back, but. The whole point of motivation initially here was for user interaction. So not having that very long delay is important here. And minutes is to, is, can, depending on the process, is going to be way too long. You want it to be much faster. Um, so again, here we have all the different grass modules. Um, and just like in grass, you can go in and use any of them, you can install extensions, and depending on uh, your permission level here, um, with using the Actinia permissions levels, depending on the user, you can limit and uh, restrict who can access what. So if you want to host this for community set and you didn't want certain things to be used, or if it can be, it can be specified. Uh, so if we click in, for example, here is uh, r.lake, so we're going to make a Blake. This is just an example of how working with this module could, could look like right here, where you could go in and just click a point on the map where you want to do the flood event, and uh, you could create the, the flooding from there. So Open Plains itself um, is still in development and being built out, but its goal is going to be to be just that true grass, uh, grass web client kind of clone with a few differences just based off the nature of the web. However, one of the other, uh, I think, important pieces of it is that I, I think of it more of a platform and where the motivation was for me to even begin working on this was that for the center that I, I work at, we do a lot of geospatial participatory modeling. And with that, we have, uh, we work communities a lot to go and build advanced geospatial models that need input from all sorts of stakeholders. And lots of these models that are in GRASS are fantastic. However, the accessibility 
to get input from a wider audience is limited. So by building some custom applications within the open planes environment, I'm hoping to allow these really great models that are in GRASS to be uh, provided to a much wider audience to help with socio-environmental um, policy and planning. So for an example, um, this is a, a version of a land use, well, this one's a watershed modeling tool. So uh, for anywhere in the US, you can go in and click on the map on uh, like a point of interest that you're interested in and it's gonna calculate on the fly your upstream contributing area and give you the land cover trend from NLCD data from 2001 to 2019. Um, all of that's also happening using uh, 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 Stack and uh, Geocog. So the user doesn't need to bring anything in. They just click and it will grab data on the fly for them. Um, I'm not I'm not even keeping it on the own, our own server, just grabbing from those other services that exist. Uh, so I had a slide in between here, but uh, during, the, during the click, uh, you can do different sorts of, let's say, fun animations that can make some of the lag time uh, work out better as we're still working out ways to optimize the efficiency between click to result. But at, at this point, this would be what like the end result would look like where you have the point that I was clicked on, uh, which is here, and this is the upstream contributing area for that region and the, the land use characteristics for that area um, during that time period. So now instead of having someone have for you to ask that, you could say, well, I'm just curious about what this looks like in my neighborhood or community of how land's changed and someone can click there and get that information. So that's just one example of kind of a more custom application that can be built and a pretty simple one. So getting into more complex um, feature sets, uh, we have the futures model, which is a urban growth uh, simulation, which is gonna do stochastic runs of uh, how uh, land use is gonna convert from forested to develop uh, for a set number of years and however you parameterize the model. Um, currently, that is still, the whole workflow is under development, um, but the Octinia routes have been developed to make this workflow work. And part of the things that we're starting to understand and learn from all this is the different type of user interactions that we can provide to introduce different uh, policy into, uh, into these models. So, for example, uh, you, for one year of the run, uh, one year of a model run, you could restrict development in an area that you do not want uh, to be developed and you could have associated costs with that. Uh, with that urban development, we're then modeling how that's gonna affect the stormwater. Uh, so how much, is it gonna increase flooding and decrease, or, and decrease uh, water quality? Are really the questions. So getting this out to a larger audience to propose how these long-term policies are gonna affect us with the uh, onset of uh, more extreme weather events, especially in areas that are, uh, in areas that have multiple municipalities managing them. So there's not just one authority who is managing like watershed. So that's kind of the driver there. You can have more collaboration in these spaces to see how unrestricted growth is working there. So again, just an example of the types of applications that uh, I'm hoping that as this platform continues to be built out, others can start to take off from this and continue to make these interactive models, so getting the models out of the hands of just the researchers and into the hands of people who don't necessarily have the same technical background um, that you might need to run these types of applications today. Um, so, uh, thank you, Does anybody have any questions?